All right, welcome. So in this course, we are going to talk about variables and we are going to actually start using Python now. But before we head on to Python, let's just think about what variables are and what they're for and why they're useful. Because when you're gonna start programming, you're gonna be using variables a lot. And for you to use it well, you have to understand them well. So um, it's just like in math, if you have a variable, it means you are storing these values. It's, it can be different values. Like for example, when you have a function like fx equals y, imagine you have these things, right? Then, you know, this is a variable. And then depending on what this variable is, y would be different. So yeah, so that's pretty much what it is. So the reason why we care about variables is because they store values so that we can reuse them throughout the whole program or change them, right? So that way we can have like in some sense memory, right? And that's really important because uh, if ever you wanna write a program, you wanna store these values in variables so you can remember them in the future. For example, uh, you could think of it as uh, some mouse settings. Now here's an example. Uh, if you could see a mouse setting for Windows 10, there's this variable maybe. This variable, it says select your primary button. So it could be that they have a variable called primary button and you assign it left or right. And then they'll remember it because it's in a variable so that they don't need to ask you every time, oh, what's your primary button again? Because they've assigned it into a variable. Or even this one, choose how many lines to scroll each time. Right now it says three, right? So what if I put 54? So in some ways, it's almost as if they have a variable called uh, number of lines scroll each time, and then you could set it to 54 or 80 or 26. And that way the operating system remembers your mouse settings. So variables are everywhere, right? You might not realize it in the beginning, but it's actually everywhere. Whenever there's something that can change, then it's a variable. So let's look at our example here, a very simple example. So here we see that we have A, and then we assign it five. So essentially what this becomes is A is actually five now, right? So if you just say output A, then it's gonna become five, right? And then what is this equation gonna be? This is gonna result to nine, why? Because A was five, so it's essentially saying five plus four, right? But here we assign it to two. So as you can see, variables can change. You know, now if we say A, then the output's gonna be two because we changed it. And then if we read this sequentially, so sequences matter. So A times two now, what would it be? Yes, exactly, four. A times two equals four. Now, what would happen if this line did not exist? Let's say we execute these lines sequentially. If this did not exist, what would this evaluate to? Then this would evaluate to 10 because a in this case is five because we haven't assigned it two. So five times two equals 10. So these are variables, right? So how do we represent variables in Python? All right, let's finally code. Now, there's one website that you guys can go to that is pretty, pretty useful for now. Uh, usually we don't code this way. We, ha we code like locally and then we could compile the language if it's like C, but here, we are going to use REPL.IT. And the reason why we're using this, it's because it's a lot easier. We don't need to think about your different environments. All these things will be explained in future courses, but for now, we just wanna start coding, right? And then select Python, and then you create REPL. What does REPL mean? REPL just means this interactive space that you can use. It's like a Python REPL. Now, let me just change color so it's easier on your eyes. Now, once you get on here, you would probably have like a main function and also a interpreter. Um, let's make it easy. Let's hide this by clicking this icon. So let me explain to you what this is. Now, this is where you write your code. Okay, you could say a equals five, right? And then here is the interpreter where you can execute certain things. So for example, if you do five plus five, it's gonna give you 10. It's gonna do exactly that. So what would happen if I say, what is A? It's gonna be undefined. It means the variable has not been set. But imagine if I click run, what does run do? Run actually runs this whole file, everything that's written here. So for example, like I could add more. So more commands. 
and it runs sequentially. So one, two, three, it runs sequentially. And then that's pretty much what it is. So it's similar to if I did on the other side, a equals five, a equals two, and then a equals three. So what would happen if I press a right now? What is the value of a? It's three, right? Because that was the last step, three. If I do a equals four, it's gonna be four, right? Now, every time I run this, it's gonna reset the whole environment. So when I run, the interpreter is gonna read these lines and run it sequentially. So now if I press A, what do you think the, the value will be? Yes, it's three because this time I press run. So that means that it executed this line and then it executed this line, then executed this line. Awesome, cool. So that's pretty much what this section is for and what this section is for. This section, you will write your code. This section will show you the output of your results. Whenever you uh, write a command, it would show results. So there's one thing that I should teach you right now, which is a special function called print. How this works is you write print and then you write uh, open parentheses, close parentheses, and then you could write whatever you want in there. So for example, you could say print A, and then when you what happens is that it's gonna print the value of A, so it's three, right? And print can have a lot of different things. You should try it out for fun. In Python, there are strings and numbers. There's also Booleans, but I'll talk about that later. So imagine if you write hello, then it's gonna print hello, right? And then if you print uh, A, it's gonna be three because it prints the value of A. It's always gonna output the result. It won't output like the variable name. The variable name is A, but the actual value is three, right? So let's just think of two things right now. There's numbers and then there's strings. So even if you put numbers here, it's still a string, right? Just remember that. So for example, you could print two numbers to get, like if you add them up, then it's gonna give you what? It's gonna give you 10. But a string is literally just a text. So the text can be five plus five. So what is that gonna print? It's actually just five plus five because think of it as letter. Each character is a letter. It's almost as if you are typing this. It's not actually evaluating. These are actual numbers and operators. Okay, so now we understand how to use this. We're gonna be using this environment to code throughout our entire course because it's a lot easier. Like I said before, a variable is a way of saving a piece of information with a specific name. By giving a value a name, we can easily reuse that value over and over again in our code, right? So for example, if I had a equals five, right? I could say a, a plus five, a plus six, a divided by five, a uh, minus one. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna print all of that just so that it's easier so we can see because if you run it, it's not, it's not gonna print because you're actually not printing anything. It only prints here because it's actually just showing you the result, but it's actually not printing. So we're gonna be printing it. Yeah, so we get 10, 11, uh, 1.0, which is just one and four. So here you see, because five plus five equals 10, five plus six equals 11, you know, stuff like that, pretty simple. Now, if I change this to six, then you're gonna see it's all gonna update at the same time, right? So we don't need to change it here, 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 here. Imagine if you didn't have variables and you had, you had this, right? Imagine if you wanted to print instead of five, six, then you're gonna have to change all these values and it, it takes forever, right? But because you have a variable, it's a lot easier. With one change, you could change the whole four sequence of operation here. So nine, boom, right? Easy switch, easy switch. That's pretty much how you use variables in Python. To assign them, you give it an equal sign. Right, and then all of these operators, you can just use them uh, if they're numbers. Now, the way I want you guys to learn programming is to play. You have to play and play and play again. So you can try a lot of different things. What if you can add more variables? Maybe try a different name, right? See what that does. A, B, oh cool, so you can do that. What happens if you do A plus B? Okay, you actually add the variables itself. What if you do A equals B? What would happen? What would A become? Now it becomes five. And the reason is because A is getting assigned the value of B. And then B, let's say equals, can you equal yourself? I guess you can, and it's still five. 
equal yourself, can you add an operator? Or can you add a number? What is that gonna be? Maybe 10. Oh, it is. So play with it, play a lot with it. This will be kind of your first assignment. And then once you get comfortable, once you know how to use it, then you're gonna be able to use variables pretty quickly, right? So we can try a lot of different things. You know, what if my variable starts with you know, a number? Does that work? No, it doesn't. It says invalid syntax. Now this is important. Whenever you see red stuff, it means it's an error. Don't be afraid of these things. They actually are trying to explain to you what the error is. And usually maybe it's a little bit cryptic. Sometimes error message are not that great because they don't explain it very well. But once you understand the vocabulary, because you see it more and more, it will be a lot easier, right? So here it says syntax error. What syntax means is just like in English. If you have bad syntax, it means that's not how you uh, write in English. So it's wrong. So in programming languages, they have the same thing. They have something called syntax. There's a way of writing um, code such that you have to follow so that the computer can understand. Remember how we talked about uh, a human can kind of deduce what you're saying, but a computer takes whatever you're saying literally, and you have to follow the rules, right? So apparently you can't have a number as a variable. What as a variable name? What if you have multiple letters like this? It works, cool. What if you know you have a little underscore, but then a number? It works, excellent. Okay, and then if ever you wanna restart everything, like your environment, just press run, and then it'll restart everything. So A will be back to nine, and B will be back to five. One more thing that might be useful for now, uh, there's something called comments. It means here, hashtag variables, means it's a comment, it means it doesn't do anything. Like, the, the interpreter actually um, rejects it, and it's more for humans to read, and then the computer will not read it because they're just comments for humans. So it's usually to give you more context for other coders to read. For example, I can say, let's say my age, and then I would do age equals uh, 25, for example. Let's delete this, right? My age, it will not be seen by the computer. Now let's do something fun. Here, I want to print, um, I want to print, like, let's say this year minus my age, right? Let's say, when am I born? By the way, I'm not 25, but I'm just gonna put 25 because it's easier. And then we have year when it was, it was legal to drink. And then we also have minimum age he can date in How I Met Your Mother. If you haven't seen this show, it's pretty funny. The first few seasons. So when will they be? Uh, when was when was the year that they were legal to drink? Well, I want minus age plus twenty one. So basically, we want to know at what year were they twenty one. Minimum age they can date. If you haven't seen the show, a guy can only date someone if their age is their own age divided by two plus seven. That is the minimum age. So for example. Uh, if your age was 25, you're gonna divide it by two, so that would be, um, uh, let's just take, let's just floor it, so it's um, 12, and then plus seven, that's 19. So if you're 25, you have to date at least a 19 year old. You can't date any younger. Apparently, that's the rule. So yeah, cool. So let's see if this works. We run it, and then great. So if you're age 25, then you were born in 1995 and you were legal to drink at 2016, when it was 2016, and the minimum age that you can date is 19.5. Interesting, okay. And then, see, that's almost, that's almost like a small, small program, right? Imagine you have a lot of different friends and you wanna know uh, right away when they were born. All right, let's do 21. And then you see, oh, they were born in 1999, and then, uh, wow, they might not even be uh, legal to drink yet, depending on their birthday. And then, you know, when can they date? Or if you look at your, you know, your dad or something, you know, you could see, you could get this very, very quickly, right? So that is the power of variables. So that's pretty much for variables. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting, and I'll see you in the next one.